Yo, what up, what up? Welcome back to the Sav Did It Podcast right here on iHeartRadio, YouTube.com slash Sav Did It. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, all that good shit. I got my motherfucking dog, What's that big man? tree in this motherfucker, producer, engineer, yeah. entrepreneur slash pimp. Oh, you know what I'm shit, talking about? You've you you been a know. busy man. <laughs> we right here live at Red Room Studios in Hawthorne, California, man, right by LAX. Link in the description. Make sure you come check the spot out, man. Legendary spot. So what's up, Tree? So let's let's dig into it, man. Let's you are a, it. you are a producer. You are a music yes, yes, a music god, man. Let's talk about how'd you get into music, bro. Uh, man, it all started when I was like young. Uh, my granny was playing the piano. Okay, and I just fell in love with the tunes, the melodies. It wasn't right. the fact that it was gospel. It was just uh, the way that she was able to create on the fly. Right. So I just like over the years, I learned that. But I took it as, you know, I started as a drummer. Okay. Initially. You know, naturally. I started as a drummer. And uh um, you play in like school bands and shit? Actually I was a I started for churches at the age of six. Okay. And then I kinda started playing for like big churches, mega tr- churches by the time I was like twelve. Okay. So I had like developed a skill. Right. So I was a young kid on the drum. Season in there. Yeah. So and you was like, drumming for Jesus, man. Man, for real. So I, was, uh, <laughs> so I was just uh, you know, playing and then all of a sudden, like one day, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what happened. Like, I thought my grandma had a stroke. Oh, man, sorry. And um, she passed away, though. But she had a stroke, and my auntie had uh, bought this keyboard, this big old Casio keyboard for her to rehab, you know, because she had her her arm. Right. And uh, she never saw the keyboard. Because uh, one day I was over at my auntie's house. I saw the keyboard. I was cleaning up. And I asked her, hey, can I open it? She was like, that's for, that's for mom. So I was like, oh, I'm going to just open it and set it up, you know? Right, right. They never saw the keyboard after that. Oh I shit! I literally set it up. Start. Shout out to my auntie too. Shout, shout out to, to auntie, auntie man. Auntie Lois. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I opened up that keyboard, put it together, and I realized like I had sixteen tracks I could record on four. So I put all the drums on one. Okay, and okay. Using the other tracks for like the bass and melody, and I was just banging out beats. Right. Then to the point to where it got to where people started hearing me. Okay. And then they start walking to my house like gangsters. Everybody start walking to my house. And they, what, uh, what part? Of, what part of the city from? South Central. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, South, South Central, Central Finest, man. Yeah, I ain't gonna say the exact. Yeah, you know what? No, nah, no, nah, it's all good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. South Central. So, uh, right. you know, making beats on the porch and all that, everybody right. coming through, and they like, oh, make me this type of beat, you know. So I just started doing that, and then right. you know, it took me to Vegas, and then from there it was history. Like, right, you know, so. bro, you've been putting your fucking feet down for a minute, dog. Man, just so y'all don't shit. know, man, me and Tree, we got a long history, bro. That's what's up. Long, yeah. long, long history, man. Known each other for a long time, man. Well, watch you, was, yeah, watch each other started. grow a lot too, bro. Yeah, yeah, definitely. For many, I'm, many years, and I'm man. proud of you, man. Man, you came thank you, bro. Way. Thank you, bro. I appreciate. Shit. it. I mean, we're trying, man. Hey, we're trying to make it do. all make sense. That's all we could do. But I'm proud of you too, bro. Because you know, every time I fucking look up, bro, you in the studio, you making beats, you doing something good, man. Where, where, where does your inspiration come from? A lot. Um, who did you look up to? Uh, as you know what? To be honest with you, I looked up to three people, and as far as production wise. And I'm just gonna be 100. I looked up to DJ Quick, number, Quick number one. Just okay. I, bro, I just I just did a sold out show with him. Me and Doggy Style did uh, last Friday, bro. Quick, yeah. fucking legend, man. That's my nigga right there. Yeah. Hey, shout to shout to DJ. Shout Quick. out to Quick, uh, Quick, and then uh, Timberland. Timbo, you know, because his drums and his cadence is crazy. So it's all like, right. I, psh, all right, I Tim. You know what's so crazy about Tim? Um, I I forgot where I saw it. Maybe it was his master class or something. It was some documentary or shit that I had seen on him. Did you know that in the early stages of his career, like like during the Aaliyah, Genuine, all that, he used absolutely no quantize? Hey, you know what? I don't. I, I don't. I don't blame him because sometimes it's necessary because it just makes it. Like, I'm gonna keep more it alive. Up, it I'm just a, makes more, right. More yeah, okay. Real. Right. Okay. You know so it, it makes it more it, alive. It's a swing on it that you can't. It once you quantize it, you take it away. Right. I mean, if if you if you if you just. If you try to stay within the parameters of a beat, how right. most people make them into sections or squares or where locks or you know right. pockets or whatever, right? You you take away from you make it mechanical, right? So Timberland he would do shit and then on purpose like I'm gonna leave it like that because it has a swing on it. It might just carry a half millisecond over the actual next timing, but still it flows and it's right. just a, it's a swing. So right. You can't teach that. You know? Yeah, it just it just um it was just so impressive to me because I mean, you know, even even me as a producer, bro, you know what I'm saying? And I, I think we can relate on this part. Like it's just it is easier to follow um a metronome or, you know, a beat or whatever. Right. But for him to just completely just make it sound the way he did, still sound on beat, but still like with that live sense, I mean it's just phenomenally impressive, bro. You can't teach that. Yeah. So okay, so who's number three? So number three will be Battle Cat. 
Battle Cat. And, and I'm going to tell you why. I, shout out to shout motherfucking out to Battle, Battle Cat, Cat man. Yeah, like, Legend, bro. So, Legend. So the first time I heard Battle, a Battle Cat beat, I automatically was taken. I, I was a young adult, but I was taken from like a teenager mode. Right. And I was taken back to a baby mode where my mom and my aunties walk around the house playing certain type of music. Right, right. But it was just funk on it. And then it was just like, yo, this this nigga's wow. Like right. what the fuck? And then just I don't know, bro. It's just like those three. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you something. Well, those are those are some really iconic people to to admire. Yeah. I mean, no 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 disrespect to Dre, no disrespect to uh Jermaine Dupree and right. all those people that I mean there's I, you know, so number much. number four on my list is is is, is, is G dub though. Because okay, yeah, G dub. He, 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 he a funk master. Yeah, too. shout and, out to G dub. He, he's like Simple, you know what I'm saying. Right. Sometimes simple is better. Yeah. Me? So I, I find I find myself in that battle a lot too, man. It's just realizing less is more, and and to try and not overthink. What what challenges do you think you faced over the years as a producer, like like trying to find your lane and create your sound that you've done today? Uh, shit. Shout out to my bro Wack. Uh, shit. Uh, when I was in Vegas, he helped me reinvent myself. Okay. Because, How so? Well. The difference between me and other producers, like we had a conversation, said, you know, it's a lot of producers, but it's just one me. Right. It's one tree. Um, I didn't know who tree was when it came to producing. I would just hear music and then I would just bring it to life. Right. So my brother, he was like, look, nigga, you need to acquire a sound. I need you to sit in the studio for 17 hours today and just load this MPC up with nothing but sounds. I, today is trumpets and horns and strings. Tom, right, tomorrow right. is piano. And once I start getting in the groove of creating my own sounds and learning how to just, you know, go through each bank and just hear right. the sounds, then I was able to formulate who Tree is. And who is Tree? Tree is a West Coast producer, but I don't sound... West Coast, like you know, what right. I'm saying like most. Well, just from the outside looking in, a lot of your production, from what I, what, from what I've heard, man, is you, you, like, you're just that, like you are a West Coast producer. However, you, you seem to, you seem to branch off very easily. Right. So, like, you don't, you don't. A lot of your, well, a majority of beats don't sound the same. You know, it seems like you don't really get caught in this, uh, this order of, um, um, uh, what for lack of better words, of like, uh, like a hamster wheel. Like right, you're not, right. re you're not just repeating the same process. And, and the reason being is because you need originality you right know what i mean the, the industry is based on what's different right you know because everybody's riding the same wave right now for instance drill right right you got everybody and they mama on drill shit. trying to emulate and yeah. you know and i'm guilty of it too because no, it's be okay though yeah but, because but, but, only because i want to learn it you right, know right and i understand that but then for the up-and-coming artists that want to rap understanding that by the time you do that, there's going to be a new wave. So right. that's it's going to be out the door. So what I try to do as a producer is like, look, these are your options. You can get a custom beat built around your personality the way that you want it right. for this price. Right. And it's not a, a absurd price. If you, can affair, uh, if you can afford a pair of Jordans, you can afford a tree beat. Yeah, facts. So, that's so, some real so, shit. So that's that's into that. That's how much a tree beat will cost you. And it's it's your beat. You can right. do whatever you want with it. You buy the rights to it. I give you the masters to it after I make right. it for you. I don't keep it. Not unless you want me to hold on to the files as a backup. Right. But for the most part, I make the beat because that's what I do. I'm a producer. Right. So I'm not finna charge you $10,000 for the outright of this beat. Why? For what? I'm, right. a, I'm about to kill a game if I can just get people to understand that, hey, you can come get a beat from this dude for like 300 bucks and it's yours. You can do whatever right. you want with it. It's custom made just for me. Nobody else is going to have it and then it's hot. So, right, right. So versus, but I got to admire that though because yeah. because I think that I think that you know especially even someone who's been in the game as long as you work with so many people, bro, it's like it's yeah. easy, it's easy for us and I speak this as a whole. It's easy for us to kind of get outside of ourselves, right. and and let ego take over a little bit, and feel like, oh, I I I, I know a tree beat is worth more than that. Right. You know, I feel like it's worth ten thousand or twenty thousand or hundred thousand or whatever it is, right? But for you to just humble yourself and really just be a fan and a in a true a true art uh, uh um what is it um architect of artistry, right? You know, to just be like, you know what? Hey, it's not even about like I'm gonna get my bag regardless. But right. I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna bless you with this track because, for a good price because it it comes with it comes with blessings. So just like me doing that for the people that's up and coming, because I know they don't have the industry money because all these right. people flashing money, but they ain't got that that starter kit yet. You know what I'm saying? I'm your starter kit. But 
it took me to better places where I was in the studio with Grammy winning artists for like 10 hours, right. making like six beats and turning them into one type shit. And then right. something different, you know, but it, 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 it'll take you places when you bless others, you'll be blessed. Yeah, so absolutely. That's, that's it's all, it's all in like good karma and shit too, you know, that's and just in having a genuine heart. And, and it's funny because, um, someone had once told me he's a Grammy nominated producer, man. Um, uh, he had told me, uh, he had told me when you do this because you're passionate about it, that's when you make all the money in the world. That's but it. when, but when you do it, because there's an ulterior motive, like, oh, you, you're making music because, one, you never got bitches. Two, you just, maybe you weren't the coolest kid in school. You know, when there's an ulterior, or you want it to be a get-rich-quick scheme, right. you might even you might even hit strike gold, bro, and hit the lottery, and you might just blow up. But will it last? Most likely not. No, because not. if your passion and your heart is really in it, regardless of how much you're making now, it's going to be priceless later on. Yeah. Something, yeah. something that you love to do and get paid for, but you would also do it for free. Right. That's Absolutely. <laughs> fire god damn it yeah. let's talk about um let's talk about uh maybe some of some of the credentials you have just for the people watching let's see uh three six uh six mafia uh corrupt brother roscoe <clears throat> shout out to roscoe i didn't see my guy uh, in a minute man who else man spice one uh, uh, spice one see, a lot of these people that i name y'all you guys are like it's before y'all generation but but you know what but, but there, there all is these people have all these people have plaques and, right and 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 doing stuff latoya williams like everybody Toy Woods is some, dope. It's, some, yeah. it's, it's somebody special. You yeah. feel me? Like, How was it working with Spice? You know I haven't what? I haven't got you know to work what? with Spice. You know what? I mean, uh, I've talked to him a few times. Like I've actually said, spoke to him a few times, but I haven't had the chance to work to him because, work with him because of my brother. Uh, like I said, my brother Wack. He put me in a position to work with so many different artists, like right. from Two Chains, like you name it. Like he yeah. just put me in a position to be around these people in the studio, and then it was just chemistry happens with Spice. It was like. Him and my bro already had a relationship, so uh -huh. it was just like I came in, and it was just like I'm little little bro now. Right. So just dealing, being in the studio, like I'm I'm in the studio like nine hours. I'm waking up like five six in the morning, banging out beats and shit. And right. Just, right. Waking up like you know in, in a mansion, like they waking up and just like coming downstairs or coming upstairs, like yo, what's what the fuck is going on up here? Right. And they walk in, and they just start grabbing pens and. That's how our relationship started. Right, that's dope. Too. I was just making beats so cold back then that it was just like, nigga, grab a pen and a paper. What are you doing? Like, we, <laughs> right. we, got this, we got the full flare studio up in the in the crib. Like, right, on, right. Man, so Spice was over there all the time. Like, it, so many people came through. Jo Felony, like so many niggas came through. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just fun. Yeah, that's dope. And it, 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 it's just like you know, it's just a process. You know, you got to sure. start from somewhere. Like you right. know, my 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 first real experience with anybody with a name was with One Twelve. Like I said, it was oh, because of, because of bro, right? And, and 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 this is you know one situation where I really look back and just thank God for it because it showed me something different with. Right you know certain grammy winning artists like some people are just arrogant as fuck like you were saying but then yeah. there are some people that are really humble right and 112 was humble like q and all them uh, man, so like dope. we prayed before you know what i'm saying um sessions and you know ate together chopped it up even talked basketball you know playing like flying out to atlanta to play basketball right, one -on -one. That's like, it's, it's just so fun when you actually get to uh the you get brother. to work with yeah, someone of that to, caliber when, yeah. when you listen to growing up listen to these right. people doing and you end up in the they end up in your house or they end up in your studio your element like, period yeah, you're it's right. like what the fuck they in the house looking like right. how many days they staying I mean, out here like yeah. oh shit like we're just that's yeah. active you know i remember one time i was in the studio session um i'm not gonna say who the artist was very famous girl and I remember she took a shit in the bathroom and I was just kept laughing right I'm like I can't believe this is somebody who's so famous and she had to take a shit like you forget that they're human bro yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna say her name I'm not gonna say her name but she's she's a she's a very successful artist and God bless her I'll tell her I'll tell you after uh, out off camera Definitely. but 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 my point being too just like like you said you know when you're when you're when you find a passion in life like it's producing whatever it is and you elevate to this position where a lot of people will not get to experience that. Like, how many yeah. people are going to say that they worked with 112, 2 Chains, all this uh, shit, 3 Six Mafia, all these people, and there's so many more that, you know what I'm saying, that, you, that you've worked with as well. Yada, like, uh, he just, he signed with uh, Maybach Music, and right. uh, it's like, it's just so many people that I started, like, you know, when they were at their, you know, beginning and middle stages, and then I came in producing, not saying that I was the producer that got them to that point, but right. I, was, I was one of the producers that, work with these guys and have personality per se, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, had something to offer that was just different than just music, you know? Right. Even if I, like, with 2 chains, I didn't, I didn't do shit 
I made a beat for Yada, and then Yada and Two Chains got on it. So it See, was just like, yeah, it was just it was it was like an alley oop. I'm, I'm sitting in there though while this shit right, happened, right, right. Like, oh, this nigga really ain't on on, on our microphone. Right. Like, he's on our C8 Sony 800 G, and I'm like, damn, this nigga really barring it up too. Yeah, and the Yada in there. That's a good mic, by the way. Uh, yeah, was, so, <laughs> like, we, had every, we had everything. Like, right. It's like it's like we you couldn't come into our studio. We had live drum set. We had live everything, guitars, yeah. whatever you needed. We had it, but it was just the fact that when you when you young, you think about being around these people you know what I'm saying like the first person that I was around that was really famous was Warren G mm -hmm. shout and, out to Warren G yeah he came on the block and Long then, Beach you know, you know from there it was like you know he ended up you know linking up with somebody mm -hmm. and then uh, over the years it just uh, a relationship uh, developed and it was like a family you know? Now, well you know and that's the crazy not to cut you off but that's the crazy part about this too is like like you said we grow up and we idolize these people and and, yeah. and they become they've, they've almost been godlike if you would right let's get, let's get in a sense just, yeah yeah in a sense like like godlike like well, what I mean just you know they're 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 just such a powerful being and a known presence right right so that's what I mean Familiar, as far as yes. the reference for that no disrespect to anybody's religion um, right, right but um uh but basically you know once you once you get to know these people and, and work with them you re you do realize that they're human too. Yeah, and, and, it's and funny then you start too, building relationships they, and shit. They all, yeah. Like people just look at them and be like, ah, oh, ah, oh, right. oh, starstruck and shit. And right. then not knowing that if this dude just had five minutes alone with you, uh. you'd be crying because he would roast you. Just you know, based right? On, you know, because niggas is comedians. Right. You know, what I'm saying? Niggas got you know what's funny? I heard one one story. I heard I heard Exhibit. And I don't know how true this is, but I heard it from a very re very reliable source that Exhibit be shooting jokes. It's a lot of people that shoot. Jokes. <laughs> Shout out to Exhibit, gotta, hey, look, man. One look, of my hey, favorites, that true West Coast legend. Look at me. I done had niggas cap on me and crack jokes from Cat Williams to nigga. You know, <laughs> I had some niggas in the studio Shout with me. Shout out to Cat. And, and in the house, nigga, yeah, was cracking facts. big jokes because this is what they bring to the table. This is their personality. So, right. like on music, you hear one thing, and then on the spotlight that they give you, you see one thing, but not knowing, like, they flesh like us. They're right. human. So, they have their traits and their comedies and their errors and whatever the fuck they do. Right. But at the end of the day, they just regular people. They just get more spotlight than others. Yeah, more spotlight, more money, you know, because of the yeah. position they're in and what they've That's done. It. But it's 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 inspiring either way. And, it, yes, and it it is. for me, even when you get to know these people, which you know, you, we have a lot of famous friends and right. shit, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, but once you get to know these people, you just realize like it just almost reassures you, like, damn. I can fucking do this too. Like if right. this, I'm if on this, the right path. I'm on the right path because if this person who I'm I'm friends with or acquainted with now, you know what I'm saying, can get to that level and they're human just like me, that it just to me it makes it more it makes it more of a reassurance that that it's possible. Yeah. Because you just realize, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day, like, hey, we're all chasing the same ghosts. They might got there first, but you know, I'm still getting there too. Yeah, and the fact is a lot of them are, are real humble enough to, you know, give you advice and pull right. you along, like, hey, this is what you need to and do. And shout and shout out to those people, man. Whether whether you're known, famous or not, man, the people that are willing, you know, willing to take the time to do that because a lot of people don't man i mean i've met people that are famous that are complete assholes right i've met people that are famous that are the most humble nice loving people you ever meet yeah you know but definitely. it's but it's just you know anybody who's willing to take that time to either get to know you or, or give you that game you know says a lot yeah. um one question i wanted to ask you too so like in your in your journey and becoming a producer too what was that turning point for you when you realized damn like this is something i really got to keep up uh when i kept hearing other people talk about my music okay and they were excited about it and i wasn't Say what? All right, that's yeah. a good. That's an interesting point. Yeah, it was. That's a, an interesting like, point. Like when I first started, I don't know what the fuck. I don't know if it was me selling dope at that time, uh -huh. or serving weed, or fucking with females, or whatever. Right. The wild life I was living. Oh, oh, it's the wild west, baby. We all we I all were know. cowboys at one time. <laughs> I don't know if it was if it was that trumping over the music, but I guess the music that I the beats that I was making back then for people mm -hmm. and they, they were like, nigga, you got it. You got it. You you just need somebody behind you. Like, let me get this tape and put this on the on, back then we had cassettes. Right. And and CDs, you know what I'm saying? So right, yeah, yeah, for sure. Track, so um I, they kept every time I made a beat, somebody would grab it from me and be like, Oh, I'm gonna take this to so and so, so and so and that. after a while get the hype, you just like, Man, whatever, I'm not tripping off of that. You know what? It's funny you say that because I've been through so many ups and downs with this game, like so many meetings that I thought was gonna change my life, or so many like, oh my god, once we get here, it's like, you know, it's like that that what is it that um you get your you get yourself worked up. Right. You know, and then and then you let yourself down. Yeah, so happens. it's like almost when you just attack the game without any expectations, it seems like that's when blessings come in even yeah, quicker. Do you, you agree? Because because Cause you're not, uh, you you you're challenging the right energy when you relax and let it come to you. Right, natural. Yeah, when you let it naturally, right. When you force it, that's when all the bad energy come around you, and that's right. when all the fuck ups and all the 
you know, the pressure and all right. it, it, it's too much, you know. Yeah. Well, for someone who's been in the game as long as you have, like you just mentioned tape CDs and all that too. Yeah. What what how do you feel the music industry has shifted? Now, obviously, you know, tapes and CDs are a thing of the past now. And yeah. now we're in the streaming and the digital era. How, how how from your personal experience have you have you witnessed the shift in the music industry and how music it was is consumed a, it was and made? A crazy shift as far as uh <coughs> taking taking uh Taking the power of the people and converting it into computers. Mm. So, so what I mean by that is there was a point where an artist came out with songs and CDs. Um, you liked that artist so much that you would actually go purchase that. Mm-hmm. They would actually get money from your purchase. Right. Nowadays, a person go in the studio, make a song tomorrow morning. They make a song at midnight tonight, right? Tomorrow morning by seven o'clock, it's got twenty four million views. Like, yeah, that's no fucking, fucking nuts. no fucking way in the world. Twenty four million people went up and got up in the morning and go bought that that song. Right, it's just it's it's a it's the way that they do it. They but that but yeah, but now but, but now it devalued music a little bit too. It did because now it's like you know artists is, they they thrived off of that tangible that was in your hand. Like, right, you know what I'm saying like I, I hand the, over fist, man. You, right. hey, they made this. This is my tangible. I got a CD. I can play it. Or they nowadays they might even have the USB albums and shit. You right, know, you know. You know what's funny? I've said this on the show a few times with a few of my guests in the past, man. Um, the thing that just really stood out the most to me, as far as and I, I mean, I, it was still the CD era. You know, I've, I've witnessed the CD era very well. Um, mm-hmm. but um, the thing that stood out to me is I remember actually going and buying the CD, right. cracking the plastic off, exactly, pulling the, the booklet part. out. That was the fun. That was part. the fun part. It was like opening Read a present, the story, you know? reading the book, the shout outs, I shout out to little doo doo. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. <laughs> but um, but the thing was is like you know reading the credits and all that. So when that era died. And we moved into the streaming and digital era. The one thing that I realized is that the fans don't have nothing they can feel like it's theirs. When you bought a CD, you Tangible. felt you felt yeah, you, you felt like it. this this uh, this is mine, you yeah, know. And if somebody you, stole your CD, you, you was that, hot. But not only that, but you were a part of it, right? You were a part of right. making history when that when that album went when, platinum. platinum or yeah. go, you were a part of it because you bought it. Tangible, right. you got the receipt, you got right. the CD, you got it in your. That's it's. I mean, like damn, like. But at the end of the day. You know, it's it's a lot easier, I can say, because um, you know at a time, and I and I hate to say this to my West Coast uh, representatives, and when I say representatives, I mean all the people that are in a position on the West Coast doing music mm-hmm. that actually have the opportunity to put good music out, and they won't do it. Yeah, they won't sign artists. Why? Because they feel as though. They gonna outshine me, take my pub and do it. But you know what? I look at it like this: Fifty was smart, Eminem was smart, all these mm-hmm. dudes were smart. Dre was smart when he signed Eminem. Eminem was smart when he signed Fifty. Fifty right. was smart when he signed G Unit, and you know, start. so everybody's right. now is is the, the top person that signed the first person is making money. Oh yeah. So the second person that signed the third person is making money right. along with the first person. So it's a chain thing. Like it's a every, chain of command. So so if yeah. you if you look at that that pattern that Dre did and set for the artist, mm-hmm. I mean for what he did for for aftermath, right. all these other artists that are in that position have the same ability to do that same thing and make a pyramid of great artists that come out of the West, but they chose not to. So it just shows to stay focused on their career. So. It's just like, man, but like I said, it's easier for unknown artists today to get in the door back it was when we were coming up trying right. to do music and get in the door because everybody, we gave a demo to, they took it, chucked it in the backseat of their car or right. I'm going to listen to it, I'm going to listen to it and never, we never. Well, you know, in a lot of record labels now, they don't even have AR departments no more. They, yeah, exactly. They, 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 it used to be a whole CDs department. Are obsolete and everything yeah. is obsolete used to be a whole, now, Yeah, so. arts and repertoire used to be a whole department. Now I think it's like one or two people per major label or something yeah. like that. And that's, and that's, that, takes away too from um it only took away jobs but it took away the the ability of people to really share ear and say hey this group is hot right. hey this artist is hot like right. hey now you got one or two people doing it and now they're biased right because, well and it's a numbers game now too because arts yeah. and repertoire was they, they used to labels would see potential talent right or talent to somebody right this is before likes and comments and shit right so they would see the potential in the artist they would bring them in and they would develop the artist artist development right artist development's gone now now oh, it's strictly what? based on what's your followers how many likes and are you getting how many yeah, views how many comments what's it. your uh What's your algorithm looking like? What's you know your what numbers? Saying? That's it. Yeah. So, so with with you with you having experienced both multiple different um, uh, waves of this music industry, man, what what direction do you see music going from here? From here, man, I see the I see music. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> music is the one thing that would never die. Right. All these artists might die, right. but, but music is always going to live. 
So True that. So so shots fired. So True so that. so my thing is that it's just when it, when it, when are we gonna get the music that's worth listening to? Right. I feel like no, um, no, no disrespect to what they making right no, now. No, not at all, not at all. But I feel like I feel like music is so easy to make now. It's in such abundance that it's watered down. It is easy to make, but if you make the right music, it can never be watered down. It can, it's timeless. It's, it's, right. At that point, it's timeless. Now, right. now it's about putting it in the right hands or letting the right person hear it. And you just like I said, the reason why. I, I think I was successful all these years is because I just stayed in my lane of like being original. Right. I didn't want to copy another producer, even though I like Battle Cat and Quick. Yeah, right. I got I got concepts and stuff. From inspired. Them. I'm inspired by them, but I'm still tree. So I'm gonna just do what I like to do, what I can hear. You know, right. wh- whatever my my mind and my body is allowing me to hear at that time. Definitely. That's, that's what's finna come out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't have a team of producers. I don't have niggas that can come play my keys and get on guitars and bass. I have to do everything by myself. Right. I've learned to do that. Very self sufficient, yeah. man. And, I, I can't do nothing but tip my head and admire it's, that. It's, it's fun though, but I, I I like working with other producers. Like I I love fucking working with T John. Right. You know that's shout out to T John. Shout out to T John. Like, hey, me and T John. Like I, true story, right? I, I, this is like the wildest story, like a studio story I can tell you that it, that that uh, we won't have to sign no papers to get, re, you know, releases of. I can tell you, <laughs> everything else is confidential, but this studio experience I'm about to tell you, man, is true. So me and T-John, when we first linked up, right, uh-huh. it was, um, hey, man, I know you. You from the opposite side of the tracks. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. All right. That was it. Uh-huh. I'm doing beats. He, he and they're recording like we just come in and out. Then all of a sudden, one day, we got locked in the studio together. Uh-huh. And this nigga Brain, he's a, he's a fucking genius. Yeah. His brain I is get, crazy. I, I just gave that fool his flowers, man. man he's, that, he's a genius. That, he, ta- he, ta- he mentored me how to engineer, bro. That, he, yeah, me, that nigga, me a lot. The nigga is cold. He got a cold ear. So so we in the studio, and I'm I'm making beats and shit. And then, you know, people coming through. We like we making like two, three songs a day at this point because I'm banging out like five to 12 beats a day. Right. And I, I, it's only in an hour, I mean, a matter of four hours that I'm doing all this. Right. So t John, like, damn, nigga, you going hard. I said, yeah, man, I said, you going hard. I'm trying to keep up with you. <laughs> and then w- for one week straight, me and TJ spent, I mean, t John spent every day in the studio. Good and shit. this nigga fell asleep on the couch. <clears throat> he tends to do that. I'm making the beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, this nigga's dead asleep, snoring, uh, like, uh, it's uh, out, snoring. And then I'm making the beat. This nigga wake up like the Undertaker talking about some tree cut the beat on, I got a hook. For real. He popped up like, nigga, like, like, <laughs> like, literally went in the, and cut the booth on, cut the mic on, and nigga went, I, Got up, went in there, did what he did, came back to the couch, went back to sleep like nothing ever happened. Yeah, he popped up like Count Blackula real so, quick. So when he woke up in the morning, I'm like, nigga, you know what you did last night? He was like, what I do? I said, you don't remember what you did? He said, no. I said, well, let me play it for you. So I hit the play button. Uh-huh. This nigga said, man, you a fool, Tree. I said, no, nigga, you a fool. Right. But it was one of those those moments that you can't teach or nothing right. that, that only – the the chosen are 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 elected or are are, are are um opting to see right because that vibe the fact that he was sleep and I whatever I was making he was dreaming about it and he came up with the lyrics in right. his dream and got up and went in I I can I can never remember shit when I wake up right even though it was good I can't remember nothing right but that moment bonded you guys and the rest was just history the rest was history like, hey man that's so we made too. an album in like two weeks uh-huh. two weeks it's and shit. we had so many features on it we had so much fun and it was just like a bond that couldn't be broken so it's like music will will take you to higher heights and, right. and it can never die yeah. the only thing that can die off is a person or, right. or, or a person's sound like right. we, we're tired of hearing Jay-Z's straight voice like right. I, no no disrespect Jay I love you but you, you sound the same on every track I wanted to be surprised like damn is that Jay-Z right you know like you know what I'm saying no like, I get you but but music will always last forever though. it will last forever man you know what I mean? man that's impressive Tree well dude I can't I can't do nothing but thank you for being on the show dog yeah, you are you it, are bro. just such a pivot in the in the game bro yeah man and, and I hope that a lot of people watching man you know make sure you hit all the links in the description check Tree out you know follow my guys support my guy yeah. and if you need them beats man tap in with my boy man where, boy where, where, where can they get your hey, beats man hey beats by the treehouse at gmail.com b-e-a-t-z b-y 
D-A Treehouse at gmail.com There you have it right there Big yeah. Treehouse On the Sab Did a Podcast Man yes. thank you so much For being on the show Tree I gotta go, have man. you back on We got a lot oh, more shit man. To chop it up and about And we gotta do a song Oh yeah we're gonna do that Right now bitch oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah. about <laughs> Hey right here Sab Did a Podcast I heard Radio Big Tree Man we out this thing Yeah we out man.